Hello everyone, I am Susie. I am Lucy. Today we will take you to the Keep Castle. There are many good stories and lots of fun toys in the Keep Castle. Let's go together. Hooray! Today I'm going to read those books to you and now let's get started. Daisy had Daisy. Daisy had Daisy. It's hard to believe such a thing, a thing could be true, and I hope such a thing never happens to you. But it happened, they say, to poor Maisie McGoo, and it happened like this. This. She was sitting one day at her desk in her school, she, in her usual way, when, when she felt a small twitch on the top of her head. Had so Maisie looked up and she almost dropped dead. Some, something particular was going on there. A daisy was sprouting right out of her hair. And behind her was sitting a young Herman, but she still drove. This uh, this looks like a daisy of her on her up here on her noodle. It doesn't make sense. Well, it could be so a noodle's place and place for a daisy to grow. Then up spoke another boy, instant then test the brightest young man in the whole of the class. It's a very odd place to be surrounding a daisy, but nevertheless, one is growing on Maisy. Hey, look it! cried Butch. Cried Butch. Butch. And right here on this room, Daisy had Maisy. She's bursting in bloom. Bursting in bloom, Mrs. Snitcher, the teacher, ran up, rushing, came rushing up quick. Such nonsense! Nonsense! Some children in here is playing a trick. Now, watch one of your boys. You boys stuck that thing in her hair. You know that a daisy could never grow there. But teacher said, but uh, I saw the thing that runs out of her head with my very own eyes. Just give it a yank if you think I tell lies. But Mrs. Sneecher uh, had heard quiet enough of this talk. Maisie, hold still! Let me get at that stock out! hollered Maisie. Maisie, mm, quite yanking, but she said, you, you are giving her pains. I will dash on that those rules and go way down her brains. The kids in the class start shouting like crazy. Daisy, hey, Daisy, hey, Daisy, hey, Maisie. Children, be quiet. And good boys and Alice, all us. Mrs. Nature was shocked by the noise in her class. I've taught in this room twenty years, maybe more, more, but I never think seen anything like this before. I have to report it. You just have to come to the principal's office and show more about Mr. Gum. Mr. Gum. Now the, the principal, the principal, Miss Good Mr. Gregory Grum was the very wise man, just as smart as they come. Uh, he knew more about anyone else in this nation about long division and multiplication. He knew all the answers to uh, why oceans are deep, the skies are so high, and why mountains are steep. steep. He should have the answer to doing this thing on Maisie. Oh, Maisie, 
My work, he declared, is a genius, genial daisy. I sing in the world, then quite often in the hills going wild, but never, uh, but never before on the head of child, child, the head of a child. And child, now what in the world ever made this thing sprout? I have no idea, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. It says here, it, it says here, it says daisies grow on the land, they grow in twin rocks, they also grow in sand. The it mentation right to here they can grow in a sprout, but mentation of the head of a girl it does not. Daisy daisies is that sometimes grow in Alaska, also Missouri, Rhode Island, Nebraska, Nebraska they they grow in Japan and Spain and Peru in India, France and Idaho too. I the whole too. They go in South Boston and also in Rome. But why should they grow all this little and grow stone? Dome. Say look it, said Maisie. Maisie is wilting, is drooping. How wonderful, Maisie. So will we be dead. You'll be ready for real of that great daisy. Just in a few minutes, our trouble will pass, declared Mr. Grum. Take her back to the class. The principal saw a most terrible sight. Then the daisy was dying, dying, and that was all right. But Daisy of the part of poor Maisie Mac knew, and Maisie was starting to wilt away too. Teacher said Miss Grum, you know that what I think. They were both going to die. Hurry, bring them a drink. And then Daisy the girl's words problem in town. You take her away and make her lie down. And uh, you lock her, uh, her uh, up tight in that room down the hall. There uh, are quite a few members and numbers that I got to call. That I got to call. Get Maisie's parents on the end of the line. I need them with them here quickly. And uh, quickly while there's still time. On the phone, on the phone, Maisie's mom asked, "What is all the fuss?" Then, goodness to Bestie, I catch the next bus. He caught to the shoe store, reached reached Mr. M uh, caught to the shoe store, reached Mr. Mac. He answered the while holding a customer's shoe, holding a customer's shoe. Oh, oh yes, this is so. No, I really must go. Let's go. The doctor she should see her. The principal said, and expect plans like this one on her head, head, head. So he called Doctor Ethan Bart, who said, "What a trick, my stethoscope packed. I'll be there in a tick." Wait, Doc," said his patient. "Patient, I will come along too. My brother is a, my brother's a vet, and he knows this mech grew when he heard things. The forest, forest grabbed his shears. Shears, I will be there just as soon as my truck can shift gears. Gears." Meanwhile, poor Maisie lay down on a couch, and the daisy slumped down on his knees in a slouch. But the window open because it was warm, and the swifty, smelly daisy attracts swarm of bees. Of bees. Buzz. Bees, 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 bees. The faster she ran, the faster they flew, and so Maisie kept running. What else could she do?
she attempted um, the hide behind the officer officer tap and snatched her that's true and who tucked all he out his head like a bumblebee catcher the beast took his hat the beast took his hat the fetch that's true said i'm not fool and he ran after Maisie back to the school school Principal Grum, Grum did not know what to do. It's worse, they cried Miss, uh, Mrs. Nature, Nature, Mrs. Nature, Miss, Mrs. Nature. And her much worse than we fear. The Daisy and Maisie have both disappeared. Behind her, charging Mr. Mac, who chased by a catamar and chasing his shoe, finished the forest. Dr. Asenberg, too. Then, Dr. Asenberg's patient and Mrs. Mac, who. Here's Mrs. Mac, who. And then through the window with the officer, that chair, and that chair who slammed the pane shut so the beast couldn't catch her, jumped Maisie McGoo to the floor, in a splatter with the daisy still there, except taller and fatter, taller and fatter. My poor little daughter, the daisy, it's true, I'm going to faint, the Mrs. McGoo. Tut, tut, said the florist, there's no need for tears, just because there's a daisy between two ears. Here's I, I'll sleep into light off of my sharp, running tears. Tears. She's my patient. Don't touch her. You must stand apart. You have to room Doss and Doctor Isabel. I think that Maisie and her plan could help me get a research grant. Research grant. The door opened wide. Why? And the mayor stepped inside. The meetings and greetings and greetings. The meetings and greetings. The meetings and and greetings was for none to complete. He was the best at long speeches. Shock, uh, shock, full of hot air. I promised my friends that if my uh, that if I'm reacted. We elected the Daisy or Maisie will be discon disconnecting the law of your father's simple and sound Daisies belong and should stay in the ground. The rest are eagle. Eagle, you will be barred them from town. From town. From a back came a voice, sometimes loud, sometimes slick, of a wheeler and dealer. You know every trick. I'm a single or finger, you hear me? I'm sure I represent Young, his name, name, and other senior guitar. But Maisie, you're so special. Please let me shake your hand. Your talent is a wonderful thing, unique in all the land. Then Daisy had Maisie spelled out in bright light. We will we'll draw kids in the day. We will draw kids in the day and parents at night. Daisy had Maisie, you've got a quite a knack. Just with my age, just stick with me, kid, and sign this contract. Your flowers need to sign too. Need to sign too. Her mother said, Maisie, don't be a fool, don't be a fool. And Principal begged her not to leave school. 
But Maisie didn't stop to blink. Blink. She signed her name in her proof ink. In her proof ink. And the daisy signed. And the daisy signed too. Daisy signed too. Daisy has never. Daisy. Daisy has never was gripping in ink. It had quickly become a worldwide destination. Maisie. Hmm. Time. Daisy had burgers. Daisy had burgers, and Daisy had drinks. Daisy had drinks, and then Daisy had stockings, stockings, and Daisy had things, and Daisy had buttons, and Daisy had buttons, buttons, and Daisy had bows. Daisy had bows, and Maisie was named the star of her shows. Shows. Fame, fame had knocked on Maisie's door. Now she had it all and more. Piles of money stuck in tents, stuck in tents. But what would his money without friends? A dream, a dream that led her far and straight. That was the price she had to pay. Maisie Mac ran the night and day, nowhere to go, nowhere to stay, because she was sure that everyone must have read her off in total disgust over and over again in her head. These words are poor, Maisie said, I can never go home. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. Nobody loved her. Poor Maisie McGrew. It's hard to believe such a thing could be true. And Maisie, that's why then the Daisy above, when Maisie Blow began talking of love, wow, you, you don't know about Daisy. Just when love is in doubt, the job of Daisy try and find out. They love her, they love her not. They love her, they love her not. Not. Don't worry, Maisie, they love you. They love me. They love me. Well, that's how it all happened. The thing went away, and Maisie McGrew is quite happy today back at her studies and doing just great in all of her subjects in room number eight and granting that Daisy, you know, that is, yeah, has never grew out of top of her head ever again, again, ever. Come on, come on, I'm ready to see all of Oh, oh, wow, it's practically never popped up there again. Expects me or says to me just now and then. Ting! After all, I'm getting used to it. We finish all the books. I'll see you next time. Bye! So that's all for today. If you have nice toys or fun toys, remember to write to Susie and Lucy. We will share it with every kid in the first place. If you like our channel, remember to click on the subscription below. Susie and Lucy are waiting for you here. See you soon.